record collection sort of started in 1989 and I bought Pacific State by 808 State and I was like nine years old and like that was like my, my one like record that I absolutely adore and I've still got it today actually and it's probably about 16,000 records in total now. My sister uh, she dated a guy who was a DJ and I just thought this guy was just like the, a god. Like, I think that was the coolest guy I've ever known. And he had two other friends and, and we all kind of hung out together and I was sort of six years younger than these guys. So I used to kind of like tag along to like, all the record shops and I'd, probably for a, a year or two years I just used to sit and listen and watch what they were doing and then like I'd be recording the Essential Mix every weekend and I'd be listening to people like Joey Negro, he did an Essential Mix I think in 1996 that I must have listened to a, a thousand times. I fell in love with that and that's what really got me into kind of play the sounds that I'm in now. Funk, soul, disco, a lot of the hip hop stuff. I listened to Jay Dilla every week without fail. When I got to work in the record shop that was just like a dream come true, you know, kind of like earning no money at all, playing records all day every day, then going out and DJing. So the Dead Rose Music Company came about at the start of 2010. Came up with the name because um, <laughs> I was sat in the studio and I was actually babysitting um, my niece and her name is Evie Rose. And I didn't kill her, that's why it's so called Dead Rose, but it kind of came from shouting her name because she was doing something ridiculously naughty and because I was doing obviously a lot of stuff with the old sort of disco tracks and like Jackie Moore was dead and it kind of came kind of reviving sort of dead dead tracks really. I didn't kill anyone, there was no, there, no, no child, children were harmed in the making of those records. Instead of trying to make and play music which I felt was kind of on trend or kind of what people wanted to hear I just did what I wanted. As a producer, I don't know, it's kind of what I lack in musicality, I kind of make up for in just downright probably geekiness and just wanting to try and, and, and do different things. I think for the fact that I've done it, I've DJed for so long and my kind of metamorphosis from being a guy who was paid essentially to play the record du jour to actually now being paid to Play what I'm listening to and what I'm into. You're kind of seeing my world. Thankfully, there's an audience for that. I've got a detached farmhouse. They seem like lamb, but nobody's near me at all and if I did what I did and the noise I made in an urban environment I think I'd probably be evicted or arrested like <laughs> like my, my wife comes in and she's like what are you doing are you having some sort of like club experience upstairs because you can hear it in the street. Yeah.